If you've seen BBC's Planet Earth, you've probably been captivated by the incredible visuals of these animals and plants doing their thing. And while the visuals are absolutely incredible, there's a backbone that's keeping the amazing visuals aloft amazing sound design. This is most noticeable in instances in which sound is definitely not captured by the BBC team on site and is completely fabricated in post. That can reach them. Why is this the first thing that I'm talking about in this video? Because whether you knew it already or not, it is important to remember how much sound design can make a difference in the final edit. It is the reason why this is scary and this is not. <laughs> Same visuals, different sound design. So today I'm going to teach you what single-handedly improved my edits tenfold in hopes that it can do the same for your videos. I'm stoked today, guys. This is my favorite part about filmmaking, and I'm excited to talk about it with you. Stay with me on this one, though, because it is a long one, but I think it could benefit you whether it's your first time learning this or you're just reviewing. Also, I highly suggest listening to this video with headphones. I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not. Uh, okay, Dylan, shut up now. I know. I'll get to it. The first thing I'd recommend doing if you want sound design to play a big role in your videos and you're not just creating something that'd be fine with a simple left-right stereo audio is to switch your project to the surround sound audio channel so you're able to take control of your sound design and create your film's audio environment more efficiently. How you'll do this is press Control command one to enter your library browser and click on the project you'd like to change to surround audio. Next, open up your inspector window, click modify, Go down to audio and change your audio channel to surround. An easy way you can check to see if your project is in surround sound audio is by looking up at your project parameters up in the top left or you can take a look at your audio meters. Press shortcut command shift 8 to bring up your audio meters or go to window workspaces audio meters. If you see two meters in the audio meters pane, you're in stereo audio. If you see six meters, you're in surround. Now you have six channels to help you create a better sound environment. Left, center, and right channels, as well as left surround, right surround, and LFE, which stands for low frequency effect. Basically a nice little subwoofer. The best thing you can do for yourself before you start editing is to capture as much audio on location as possible. You can recreate audio environments in post, but just do your yourself a solid and record as much as you can beforehand just in case. Nothing beats having that original sound in the editing room. If you don't plan to record any sound, say you're shooting at a high frame rate for some slow-mo footage, just be aware of the sounds you hear while on location. So for example, be active in hearing the different birds in their locations in relation to where you are, notice the light noise of the wind blowing in the trees or the panning sound of cars driving by. Just by actively listening when on location, it'll make your time in the editing room that much easier with creating the sound environment. Once in Final Cut Pro, we'll start to design our sound so it helps to immerse the viewer into whatever world we're creating and make them feel like they're there with our visuals. We'll do so by layering. Essentially, layering is stacking and placing audio clips on top of each other so when played back, the audio sounds fuller and more complete. In the same way that one instrument playing can sound good, but multiple instruments played at the same time can create something on a whole different level. This is obvious to most, but for those just starting out or those who are unfamiliar on the topic, this can really help to help you to create a quality sound design in your videos. Let's use this short sequence in my Papua New Guinea film to talk about layering. No sound in this sequence was shot in camera. It was all fabricated in post to give off a scary, nervous vibe, which symbolized my thoughts about the country before going on the trip and after reading some nerve-wracking articles about it. When you create your edit, think of what ambient background tracks would benefit the scene. Here I chose multiple rain and thunder sound effects as well as a wind howl. These aren't the main sounds heard in the track and are barely noticeable unless you're listening for them, but they help to create a fuller auditory experience for the viewer slash listener of your film. This is because, unless you're living in a soundproof room day in and day out, your daily life is constantly filled with barely audible sounds going on in the background. Adding some white noise like what goes on in our day-to-day -day lives can help to make your sound design sound fuller and more natural. <laughs> Along with this ambient background layer, I included sound effects that signify movement, effects that I call accents, which are just small sounds to add some character to the visuals, 
and then some isolated sound effects that played the main roles in the sound design. Adding all these layers can make your timeline look sloppy and unorganized though. If you want to organize these sound effect layers, right click your audio and click assign audio roles. You can edit and add these roles, add sub roles, change the color of them, etc. You can help to see your sound design a little better as you edit on the timeline by going to index and you'll notice you have options to the right of each audio roll. This first option expands the audio roll or roles you choose a little more and brings a stray audio clips back to their specific audio roll section on the timeline so it can be with its little audio roll family. This second option expands the sub roles of each role into different sections. And the last option completely isolates an audio roll of your choosing and makes it stand out on the timeline. With this pressed, every unclicked audio roll gets squished so you have more room to see the role that you want. You can also completely mute audio rolls by clicking on this row of buttons here. An important tip to remembering when layering audio and just editing audio in general is to always have your audio meters up. You'll use your audio meters to determine if your audio levels are appropriate because if they're not appropriate and if they go past zero decibels here and you see red either on the audio waveform right here in your timeline or popping up on the meter, you will have issues when you export. Your audio will be distorted, it'll sound terrible, and no one will love you. Remember, audio is additive, so the more you start stacking layers of audio, the closer your project's audio will get to going past zero decibels. So my advice to you is to start the majority of your audio clips at negative 10 to negative 12 decibels if you are planning on layering things like music, dialogue, foley, ambient sound effects, accents, etc. When layered, they'll add up closer to zero, and if not, then you just have a little bit extra wiggle room to tweak certain sound effects that you'd like to be accentuated more than others in your edit. To quickly raise or lower your auto by a decibel, the shortcut is Control minus and Control plus. This is probably one of my most used shortcuts actually, so if I think my audio is a few decibels too loud, I will click the audio, press Control minus a few times, and I've quickly lowered the decibels. I've just found that this is easier and safer saves me more time than trying to drag my levels down on the clip or by going to the inspector window. And little side note, if there's only a part of your audio clip that's too loud, use the range tool and lower just that section by pressing R, selecting that area, and either using that control minus shortcut or drag it down manually. Something that is also extremely valuable when editing audio and specifically when layering audio is using fades to blend sounds together. Abrupt starts and stops in sound can be jarring, so adding a gradual increase or decrease in volume will help to keep your viewer in the experience. These little buttons on your audio clip here are your fade in and fade out slider. If you right click them, you have options for the different fades and they're pretty self-explanatory. The higher the line is, the louder it is. So with this fade option, it's very gradual. And with this option down here, it starts off very quiet and quickly gains volume. Once a fade is made, that button will turn a lighter color. Another example of when fades are helpful is with interviews. If you have two audio clips that play one after another, chances are you'll be getting a popping noise from that change in audio. And while and while the and while the and while the so using a fade can help to smooth those two separate audio clips together. And while the and while the you learn how to switch your audio to surround sound in the beginning of the video. Now let's take advantage of that by using the panning modes in your audio inspector. This is a real game changer that can help you to improve your sound design quite a lot. Basically, it'll give you control of where sounds play in your listener's headphones and speakers. Open your inspector window and go down to pan. Click mode and you'll see you have a bunch of options here. I'll quickly go over these. The two modes I use the most and arguably the most useful are create space, which I use the majority of the time, and ambience, or ambience, ambiance. Create space distributes sound across the spectrum with more signal to the left, center, and right channels. This is a great general purpose mode that I use to design my sound environment, and especially if I want to mix stereo sound effects into a surround sound timeline or surround sound mix. So let's do a quick example. I'll quickly explain the surround panel right here by using this steady sound. 
If you don't have on headphones now, I would highly suggest putting them on so you can hear this. This dot is your audio. By pushing it closer to these speakers, you're pushing the sound towards left speaker, center speaker, right speaker, left surround, and right surround, respectively. The more you push away from the center towards the speaker, the more sound is played from that speaker or speakers you're going towards. The more center you are with the dot, the more evenly the sound is distributed. So if I have a sound that should be coming from the right of the frame, I'll click create space and place my sound slider in the direction of where that sound would be coming from if we were standing in the scene. Also, where this is really useful is when you want to animate your audio to fit your visuals using keyframes. So we'll start with our slider to the right speaker for the most part since our tide is to the right. I'll press the keyframe button and I will head to the point of the clip where the tide is coming into frame. I'll drag the slider towards the center and a little bit left here with the visuals of our tide as reference and now our sound sounds like it's moving precisely with our visuals. The ambient surround mode puts more signal towards the surround channels and less signal to the front and center channels. So this is useful if you have a scene where say people are at the beach and you want the sound of the ocean to fill the atmosphere in the background. It's really great for adding that background ambiance, hence the name. It's definitely my second most used pan mode. Basic surround positions the signal in its default channels with a stereo signal in the right and left channels and a mono signal in the center. I rarely use this to be honest. Dialog pans the signal to the center channel so that more is clear and up front in center. Obviously, this is great for dialogue and for voiceovers. Music pan distributes the music evenly across the surround spectrum. This is useful, especially if your music is stereo, but you like to incorporate it into the surround mix. Circle pans the sound around the listener like a bee buzzing around the listener's head, but keyframes will need to be pressed. You can't just click circle and have the pan automatically happen. Same for the rest of these. Rotate pans around the surround spectrum as if the listener is turning in a circle. To be honest, circle and rotate really are very similar to me. It's hard to differentiate between the two. Circle is just more concise, I guess, with the sound, and rotate is more broad. The last couple are all self-explanatory. So let's do another example with this shot here of this boy walking. Think about how you would create this scene with audio from scratch. We'd need some ambient sound effects first. If we were actually in this location, maybe we'd hear some birds and some wind in the background. So we will add these. We'll use the pan mode ambient, which will help to make these sound effects more of a surrounding background noise. We need some sound effects of children playing and talking since there are children to the right of the tree here. So with this, we will grab the sound effects we want and we will use the create space pan mode and position our sound so it is in the correct location as to what the viewer is seeing in the visuals. So for example, this sound would be occurring to the right and in the front of the camera. I'll press the keyframe at the start and find where in the shot I want the sound to move to, and I'll drag the slider closer to the center point as the scene progresses closer to the kids. That makes it sound like as the camera is walking closer to the kids, the sound of the kids is becoming more general and encompassing. I can also make keyframes to the volume of the audio, so the volume of the kids gets louder as we walk closer. You can do that on your audio clip by setting keyframes by pressing option K and raising the volume bar, or you can do this in the audio inspector. I'll add footstep sounds and make sure to time them according with each of his footsteps. To fill the audio environment a little more, I'll add maybe a town ambiance, set the volume pretty low and change the pan mode to ambient. Maybe I'll add a more isolated bird sound effect, possibly one flying by. That sounds good. Something you can do to help give your sound effects a little extra oomph is tweak them or put effects on them so they become something a little more. I speed up and slow down sound effects quite a bit to see how they sound and fit within a scene. Do this by pressing Command R and then dragging on this point here. Obviously this is going to cause some distortion if you change it too much, but sometimes that can work for you. For example, in this sequence, this boy named Carson is climbing this tree to get mangoes. I slow down an effect of a bush shaking to get an effect like leaves in the tree are moving a bunch and it sounds a little distorted when isolated but together with the whole clip it sounds great. 
I did this to increase the duration of the audio clip to drag it out longer, but it also added as a nice white noise background layer to fill the audio environment. As far as audio effects, here are a few of my favorite audio effects that can help to tweak your sound effects to fit your edit. First, Cathedral and Modest Cathedral, which basically adds a little reverb and echo to your sound effects. So take this audio clip of people talking and walking, which sounds like it could be in an office of some sort. Add Cathedral, change the style to grandiose, and change the amount, and now the environment sounds like we're in a huge museum or the Sistine Chapel. Change it to Modest Church, and now we have more of a mall environment. Change it to Basic, and now it's what it would sound like in your head if you were disoriented in a mall. All of these options for slight changes can have a big impact on your sound design. Some similar effects are small room, medium room, and large room. These are a little bit more subtle. Some other cool audio effects include underwater and muffled. Both offer a muted style for your sound effects which you can tweak and use in different ways. For example, in that same scene we did an example on a little earlier, I chose to use the muffled sound effect when the film had an extreme close-up of the boy thinking about how he'd get up the tree. I wanted the viewer to be sucked into his thought process and feel the way he felt in regards to tuning out things around him so he could focus on the goal. This effect I think helped to accomplish that. Another effective tool in shaping the sound in your films is the channel EQ. In one of my old videos on useful Final Cut Pro stock effects, which I will link in the description, I talk more about how to use this tool, but I will quickly explain how it could be useful for you. I don't know why I picked these two tracks as an example, but say you have a sound effect of people talking and you have a sound effect of someone giving a speech. While well, we're asking questions, let me ask you. If you pull up this channel EQ on both, you'll notice their waveforms are showing very similar frequency levels. And we can hear this in the audio. It's kind of hard to hear the orator. It's muddled. So we're asking, while well, we're asking questions, let me ask you. So what we'll do is lower the frequency range that is directly clashing with the other frequency range in the clip we want to hear better. So the orator, whom I believe is JFK, is generally speaking in this frequency range. So we'll go to the conversation background clip and lower that same range. Now the audio isn't a muddled mess and you can hear the speech a little better. Deliberately, cynically deceived us about the nuclear buildup in Cuba. You can also use the channel EQ to add a high pass filter by dragging this here to take out all the low frequencies in your audio clips. Or you can add a low pass filter to take out all the high frequencies. Just another tool in your toolbox for better sound design. With these added effects on each clip, there's an easy way to adjust the keyframes and levels for them. Right click on the audio clip and press show audio animation, or use the shortcut control A. This will give you the option to adjust your keyframes and the amount of the effects on your clips. So as an example, click on this button to the right here, press option K to set keyframes, and adjust the level of the effect by pulling down or raising up on these uh, bars or keyframes. Now you have a more visual view of how these effects are applied. And that's about it guys. I realize I'm probably missing some things, so if I am, let me know what in the comments below. Do me a solid and hit the thumbs up button if this video provided you with at least a little bit of beneficial info. I put a ton of time into this one, so support is always appreciated. If you have not subscribed, make sure you do so so you'll get notified about all my future videos. And I will see you guys next week. Happy creating.